there, third and fourth graders. Today I'm going to read a few chapters to you starting on page 100 with chapter 35 called The First Swim. What character could be going for a first swim? Hmm. Good afternoon, you two, said Loudwing as she waddled into the garden. Remember me, Bright Bill? Loudwing, Loudwing! Very good, the old goose giggled. Now, Roz, do you know what tomorrow is? Tomorrow is swimming day, the day when all the parents take their goslings out on the pond for the first time, and you simply must bring Bright Bill. Swim, swim, said the gosling, shaking his tail feathers. Bright Bill can go, said Roz, but I cannot swim. I cannot go on the pond with him. I will not be able to protect him. Who would have thought a big thing like you would be afraid of a little water? Loudwing laughed. Well, I don't, whoops. Well, don't worry about Bright Bill. He'll be safe in the flock. And he's going to have so much fun swimming with the other goslings. We'll begin at sunrise, so don't be late. See you in the morning. And with that, the goose plopped into the water and glided away. Swim, swim, said the gosling. Yes, Bright Bill, said the robot, staring at the pond. Swim, swim. Early the next morning, peeps and honks and splashes began echoing across the calm water. Roz and Bright Bill followed a trail through the fog and over to a beach that was crawling with fluffy goslings and proud parents. Roz took a few steps into the water, but her survival instincts immediately flared up. The robot's computer brain knew that if water got inside her body, it could do serious damage. And so as the other parents began swimming, swimming across the pond, Roz stood safely in the shallows and watched. Bright Bill ran up and down the beach with the other goslings, peeping and laughing and pretending to be afraid of the tiny waves. When one wave finally pulled him in, he felt his body floating on top of the water. A big smile appeared on the gosling's face. Clearly, Bright Bill was designed to swim. Very good, Bright Bill, said Loudwing as she floated past. You're a natural. Yes, Bright Bill, you are a natural, said Roz, trying to sound like a good mother. Loudwing rounded up all the goslings and gave them a quick swimming lesson. Remember, everyone, paddle your feet evenly to swim in a straight line. Paddle with your right foot to go left and paddle with your left foot to go right. Try it out and join the rest of us when you're ready. Happy swimming day! Loudwing and the other adult geese calmly glided toward the center of the pond. A jumble of goslings tried to keep up with them. The youngsters jostled and splashed and peeped with excitement and gradually they paddled off, paddled in the direction of their parents. Only Brightbill lagged behind. Mama swim? Roz pointed to the flock. I cannot swim. Go have fun with the other geese. You will be safe with them. The gosling took a deep breath. Then he shook his tail feathers and paddled his feet and set out on his very first swim. He drifted too far to the left, then he drifted too far to the right, but his feet just kept paddling until he caught up with the other goslings. Roz spent the morning watching her son swim around and around the pool, and as she watched him, she felt something like gratitude. Thanks to Bright Bill, the robot now had friends and shelter and help. Thanks to Bright Bill, the robot had become better at surviving. In a way, Roz needed Bright Bill as much as Bright Bill needed Roz, which was precisely why she felt such concern when the mood on the pond suddenly changed. One moment, everything was tranquil, and tranquil means calm, tranquilo. And the next moment, the geese were in a panic. Something was violently sloshing through the group. It was Rockmouth, a giant toothy pike. The fish had been a problem in the pond for as long as anyone could remember, but he'd never attacked goslings before. All the parents immediately went to protect their young, all the parents except Roz. The robot could only stand in the shallows and watch as her son left the other geese behind and desperately swam toward his mother. Swim to me, Bright Bill, quickly! The gosling kicked as fast as he could, but alone in the water he made an easy target. The pond rippled as rock mouth slashed below the surface. Mama, help, squeaked Bright Bill. The robot was terribly conflicted, and that means she couldn't decide what to do because she had more than one thing that she wanted to do. 
Mm. Part of her knew she had to help her son, but another part knew she had to stay out of deep water. Her body lurched forward and then backward again and again as she struggled to make a decision. And then Loudwing came to the rescue. Rockmouth, don't you dare harm that little darling. The old goose, goose fluttered over and splashed down right on top of the fish. Leave him alone. She pecked and kicked and beat her wings against the fish until he surrendered to the murky depths of the pond. Loudwing escorted Brightbill back to the beach, and a minute later the gosling was in his mother's arms, safe and sound. Rockmouth isn't as dangerous as he seems, said the goose out of breath, but I think that's enough swimming for one day. I thought he was a goner. Chapter 36, The Gosling Grows. <clears throat> Bright Bill soon forgot about the incident with Rockmouth, and he spent his mornings cruising around the pond with the other goslings. He was becoming a great little swimmer. He was also becoming a great little speaker. Hello, my name is Bright Bill, he said to anyone who would listen. The gosling was small for his age, and he always would be, but he was growing bigger and stronger that by day, by the day. He, his increasing size was matched by his increasing appetite. He gobbled down grass and berries and nuts and leaves. Sometimes he'd snack on little insects. If it was edible, Bright Bill would eat it. And even if it wasn't edible, he might eat it anyway. Roz felt something like fright the time she saw Bright Bill swallowing pebbles on the beach. She was holding him upside down, hoping the pebbles would fall out of his mouth when Loudwing stepped in. Put the gosling down said the goose with a laugh. It's perfectly natural for Bright Bill to eat a few pebbles. That they, They'll help him digest his food, but not too many, okay, little one? Like most youngsters, Bright Bill was incredibly curious. He explored the garden and the pond and the forest floor, and he would occasionally explore neighboring homes. He'd wander down some hole in the ground and say to whoever was there, hello, my name is Bright Bill. Then a long robot arm would reach in and pull the gosling back outside. Sorry to bother you, Roz would say in her friendliest voice. <clears throat> the mother and son slipped into a good nighttime routine. While the gosling slept, the robot, ro robot might tend the fire if it was cool out or gently fan him if it was warm. If he woke up thirsty, Roz brought him food or water. And whenever he had nightmares, she was always there to rock him back to sleep. Chapter 37, The Squirrel. A small squirrel was scurrying through the garden. Bright Bill had never seen her before. He peered out from the nest and watched her bounce across the town. Town, lawn is the correct word, sorry. <laughs> After a minute of spying, the gosling shook his tail feathers and waddled outside. Hello, my name is Bright Bill. The squirrel froze. Then she slowly turned around and then she started to talk. Hi, Bright Bill, my name is Chit Chat and I'm a 12 and a half week old squirrel and I'm new around here and your home is really big and round and I don't understand why smoke sometimes comes out of it. Reader, I'm not quite sure how Chit Chat got enough air into her lungs to go on like that. And I'm not quite sure how Bright Bill had the patience to listen, but he stood there and patiently nodded as Chit Chat rambled on and on. And sometimes I see you waddling behind your funny looking mother and you seem so nice that I thought I'd come down and introduce myself, but now I'm nervous and I'm talking too much and my name is Chit Chat. I think I said that already. <laughs> there was a pleasant silence. Bright Bill stood on one foot for a moment. Then the gosling took a deep breath and said, it's very nice to meet you Chit Chat. I don't think you talk too much. I think you talk just enough and I like you, so let's be friends. A big smile appeared on the squirrel's tiny face for once, Chit Chat was speechless. <laughs> Chapter 38, The New Friendship. Chit Chat wasn't speechless for long. She'd already been alive for 12, uh, for a whole 12 and a half weeks, and she wanted to tell Bright Bill about every exciting thing and every boring thing that had ever happened to her. And so, as the new friends played and explored and ate together, the squirrel shared her stories. I was born on the other side of the hill, and then last week I decided I was ready to build my first dray, which is what you call a squirrel nest, and now I live in that tree with the weird bump in its trunk, she said, while the two of them kicked pebbles into the pond. 
One time a weasel chased me through the treetops until he missed a branch and fell all the way down and crashed into a bush and walked away all wobbly. And then he never bothered me again, she said while the two of them crawled through a hollow log. Ew, gross. I saw you eat that ant one time. I ate a gnat by accident and I didn't like it at all. I mostly eat acorns and bark and tree buds and sometimes the yummy berries that grow in your garden, she said while the two of them took a snack break. But Chit Chat was as good a listener as she was a talker. And whenever it was Bright Bill's turn to speak, she'd keep quiet and hang on his every word. Do you know who enjoyed their conversations most of all? Our robot, Roz. The protective mother was never far away and she felt something like amusement at the silly conversation she overheard. And she felt something like happiness that her son had made such a good friend. Chapter 39, the first flight. And this is my last chapter for today. Bright Bill had spent his entire life by the pond and he was becoming very curious about what lay beyond his neighborhood. <clears throat> so one day his mother said to him, let us go for a walk and I will show you more water than you could possibly imagine. Roz placed the gosling on her flat shoulder and the two of them set off across the island. They marched out of the forest crossed the great meadow and climbed uphill until they were at the top of the island's western ridge. Before them was a grassy slope that descended all the way to the dark choppy waves that surrounded the island. That is a lot of water, said the wide-eyed gosling. I'm a good swimmer, but I'm not good enough to swim across that pond. That is not a pond, said the robot. That is an ocean. I doubt any bird could swim across an ocean. Waves rolled in from the horizon. Seagulls circled above the shore. A steady breeze blew up the slope. Brightbill's yellow fluff had recently changed over to a coat of silky brown feathers, and he spread his feathery wings into the breeze. And then, Mama, look! For the briefest of moments, the wind lifted Brightbill off the ground. But he quickly tipped backward and thumped into the soft grass. I was flying, he squeaked. That was not flying, said Roz, looking back at her upside down son. Well, I was almost flying. I'm gonna try again. I have observed many birds in flight, said Roz. Sometimes they flap their wings quickly and other times they fly without flapping at all. They spread their wings and soar into the wind. So I was soaring, said Brightbill. Almost. There, look at that soaring seagull. It seems like she is not doing anything, but if you look closer, <clears throat> you will notice that she is making small adjustments with her wings and tail. I think you should try adjusting your wings in the wind like her. Bright Bill hopped onto a rock and opened his wings wide. The wind is pushing me backward. Change the angle of your, wind, of your wings, said his mother. Let us see what happens when they slice through the air. Bright Bill slowly angled his wings downward. The more he turned them, the less the wind pushed him backwards backward and just as his wings leveled off mama look he squeaked as his feet lifted the his feet left the ground <clears throat> he hovered there for a second rising a little higher than before and then he sailed backward into the soft grass again the gosling kept hopping onto the rock and kept riding the wind and kept tumbling into the grass until he started to find his wings with each attempt he floated a little higher and a little longer, and finally Bright Bill really did soar. He lifted high into the air and hung there, floating. He turned his wings down and felt himself drop. He wiggled his ta tail feathers <clears throat> and felt himself veering back and forth. I'm a natural, he squeaked. You are doing very well, said Roz, but you need to keep practicing. And so they spent the afternoon practicing up on the ridge. Once Bright Bill was comfortable soaring, he tried flapping his wings. He flapped high into the air. He flapped in straight lines. He flapped around and around in circles. A big smile appeared on the gosling's face. Clearly, Bright Bill was designed to fly. <clears throat> I'm flying, Mama. I'm really flying. You are flying, said the robot. Very good. Bright Bill was now a real flyer, but all that flying had worn him out. He lowered himself toward the ground and tumbled onto the grass one last time. His landing still needed some work. Roz placed Bright Bill on her shoulder and headed back to the nest. I can't believe I'm flying now, Mama said Bright Bill in his sleepy voice. 
I just, I just wish you could fly with me. And then the gosling words were replaced by his quiet, steady breathing. And that is where I'm going to stop today. Uh, I'd like for you to write one or two sentences for all of the chapters that I read today. Uh, and that would be, I just stopped at 39. <clears throat> and I started, just checking to make sure I'm not making it up. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> I think I started with uh, chapter 100. And chapter 100, page 100, which is chapter 35. So one more time, that's chapters 35 through 39. <laughs> Alrighty, one or two sentences about all of them. See you soon.